Hello everybody, this is Jalisa. I'm here once again in my channel doing a quick um, little video for you guys. Thank you so much for subscribing. First of all, I see my channel growing. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to my videos, to watch my videos online. As you know, I'm a fashion designer here in downtown Danbury. Today is November 30th. It's the day after Black Friday, so that means it's Small Business Saturday. I'm here at the studio. I open at 10 a.m. It's almost 1 p.m. right now, and nobody has come up to support. It happens a lot. That's okay. But here's the, here's the irony of everything. Um, it's so interesting to me that people go crazy for deals. And I know everybody's struggling. Like, I know that. Because, um, obviously, I am too. It's hard out there. Now, these days, nobody can survive unless you have two jobs. Like, I get it. But if you think about it, like if you buy, let's say if you buy a pack of socks, right? And you're buying six pairs of socks for like $3. Can you just imagine how much that person that who made that is getting paid? Of course, it's a great deal. But at the end of the day, like the, the worker who made that is not getting anything. <laughs> You know, these people have to work so much overseas. I mean, you, you put in, I mean, a lot of the merchandise comes from overseas. So you have to, shipping from overseas is expensive, right? And then you get um, the material that you have to buy and you have to pay this worker. How much are these people getting paid to make those socks that you're buying here, pushing people out of the store to buy? Like, uh, you know, without education, people would not understand everything. Um, I think a small business service is a great movement. The only thing, we just have to get the community involved more. Um, I've been doing this five years already. And uh, maybe one year was really good when I had a few people come up. But it's hard, people. It's just crazy. Um, you offer them a free gift nothing and people will say oh it's advertisement oh it's where you're locating all of that but you know even when when you're like doing vendor events people you tell them this is all handmade like all my jewelry and everything is handmade people don't really buy it. i don't know what it is and people say well maybe it's what you're selling no because if you put a huge bin in the middle of a coast let's say and you put 3.99 people will buy whatever is in there because they know it's cheap you know, it's not like my stuff is super expensive. So there's something that's keeping people from supporting small businesses, especially like myself. And I'm trying to figure out what that is. And we cannot blame everything that's going bad with businesses on Amazon. Because as you know, I also have a website and I do sell online and I'm also on Amazon. But anyways, um, I just wanted to make this video. You know, I... You know, I always open for Small Business Saturday. Everybody throughout the year say, when are you open? When are you open? When you tell them when you're open, nobody comes. But that's okay. You know, the day is not over, so I'm very hopeful. And we'll see what happens. But here's the thing. Um, as you know, I went for school for fashion design. And I went to school in Italy for fashion. I went to study in New York for fashion. And right out of college, I couldn't wait. To get into New York City to start this fashion journey and that didn't happen a lot of times in life things don't happen the way you expect like today um, you think you're gonna come up here on small business Saturday you do your advertisement you do your part you work so hard so hard on your items and you feel and you know I went and bought and bought boxes today to give with my jewelry and you fill the, the place up with merchandise and it's, I've been open for three hours. Nobody has come up yet. Everybody's probably at the mall. That's okay. Um, it's just stuff that happened that, you know, you reevaluate what you're really doing with what you do. But anyways, what I was saying about the school and everything is that when I was, when I graduated college, I couldn't wait to go to New York City and start my fashion thing. I apply everywhere. You know, a lot of times people graduate from school, they have a huge debt, especially here in the U.S. And you think you're going to get a job. Like I was like, these people cannot wait to hire me. It's because you're, you're so bloated, I think. I don't know how it is now, but when I graduated, everybody, their egos were up here. You know, everybody thinks they're the best at everything. 
you know, we're the graduating class, the senior class, we're like, we want to take over the world. And you're like filled up like a big turkey. I mean, it's a turkey on Thursday, but you're all filled up and you can't wait to start on your own, do your own thing, and then things don't go the way you expect. And I applied so many places. I went to so many interviews. I can't even remember how many. And, I, you know, you're interviewing in New York City. So you meet a lot of designers. So I met people that I see them in Fashion Week now. And, I mean, not anymore. That's the other thing. I met, I interviewed and communicated via email with a lot of designers that I was trying to apply to. And what I found was that a lot of these jobs, because I mean, one thing is I live an hour and a half away from New York City, so I will have to commute, right? Because I'm right here in Connecticut. So maybe that played a part of me not getting a job over there. But I honestly believe God had a different plan for me. Um, I was way over my head. I couldn't wait to go to New York and glorify myself. And tell everybody, yeah, I work in New York City. You know, the fashion thing, you know, she's a designer, she works in New York. It's like your head out, you're put into this standard. And it's like, it's not really like that. I mean, what do you get out of that? That people think that you're like amazing because you work in New York and you work for a design house. It's so stupid, I'm sorry. This is one of the things that I don't like about the fashion industry. They put designers up here. And I know people that work in New York with designers. They, they say, you know, these people are rude. These people scream at you. They make you do crazy stuff. They never give you credit for your sketches. Because, you know, a lot of these designers, even though their names and the label and everything, they have a design team of about 10 people, like designers like myself, who work with them on their collections. They don't come out at the end of the show. They don't get the credit. So, you know, I was like, oh, my gosh. How come nobody's hiring me? You know, I, say, I used to send my portfolio on a disc. And on a CD, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm sending so many out in my cover letter. I, you know, I, I used to send so many things, and I would go for my interview. Like, I used to work at, at a store as a visual merchandiser. I used to call out every other day because I had interviews in New York. Wasting my time, wasting my money. Like, a, you know, it's like a dumb person just not getting the fact that sometimes... You can knock on that door, man. If it's not going to open, you can try anything. It's not going to open. It will not open. And, you know, and then everybody, you know, will be, oh, so we're going we're gonna to see you lying at the stores. Like, obviously, things like that takes time. You know, you get people who are playing dumb with yours, just asking stupid questions. You know, you're right out of college, and they want you to have your own fashion week show. Like, who does that? Like, unless you're, like, on Project Runway or something. Um, all these expectations that they have for you, it's insane. People that do, don't know anything about fashion, they expect you to have so many things. And they're like, oh, I was at Coles the other day. I think I saw one of your shoes. I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, the shoe said you lease on it. I'm like, I don't, I don't even have, I don't even know how to go about making a shoe to put it on a call at a Coles department store. It's just, um, sorry, I'm getting a little sick. But anyways, it was just very, um, people give you unrealistic expectations. Um, so I'm, I'm going back to that, to that video in my head for some reason. It's came into my head. Um, you guys saw maybe two years ago or a year ago when that guy from the Cosby show, Jeffrey or something, um, he was found working as a, a, at a supermarket and somebody recorded him he said this is the guy from the Cosby show the actor and he was just doing being a cashier at a supermarket that's another thing it's so what well, he's working but people will see you oh you, oh I thought you were in New York already I used to work retail right here in Connecticut people will see me like people that know me and stuff that like, what are you doing here you work for that company Oh, I expect you to be in New York. And you have to be so careful how you talk to people. First of all, like, it's not like I'm selling drugs. You know, it's just what happened to that guy, the actor. It's like, he, you know, he's just earning an honest living. And of course, you know, guys, I know that 
maybe I know more now that you cannot take people's opinion like that, but some people, they just ruin your day. You know, I was so young. I was just doing my best. And I'm like, you know, I'm not going to explain myself. Like, I, I was about to be like, you know, lady, I'm waiting for to hear back. I got, I got interviews. I'm doing this thing online, you know. But I'm like, I'm not going to explain myself to these people. They're just being ignorant. But anyways, when it comes to knocking on doors that are not going to open, I am glad now, looking back at it, I mean, I spent about two years right out of college trying to get a job in New York. At one point, they offered me a job. And they're like, yeah, you know, you can start as a receptionist here and then we'll move you to the design department. I was like, oh, yeah, sounds great. And then the minute they told me the salary, I mean, I was, it, I don't know how I was going to pay for the commute over there. So obviously, I couldn't even pay for the commute. I couldn't even pay to have an apartment there or have a, a studio apartment, anything. Um, so I was like, wait a second. I'm thinking to myself, I'm making more at the store than commuting over there two hours, you know, maybe three hours during the day just to get here by 8 p.m get here to communicate by 8 p.m you know i can spend the 300 dollars that i use on the train monthly and open a studio and start my own thing and get out of work at 4 30 or something but looking back at it god has the plans for your life so i stopped i stopped completely i was like i am done interviewing it's just it i was just burned out i was completely burned out i don't even know how to, i don't want to meet any another designer i don't want them to show me the studio anymore like i was so done and when you have that it might as well not even go to the interview you were done um yeah i saw a lot of pride too you know i was trying to get it like towards the end that i stopped interviewing i'm like oh my gosh these people are so weird these people um the designers though designers are cool for some reason the people that work around the designers they're so strange like they give a fashion this prideful like it's, it's this prideful thing to it like designers i would talk to a designer for hours because uh, you know we can talk about anything making the clothes or anything but then the people around them you know it's just there's something about that i don't know what it is the people around designers, you know, not necessarily models though. Models are like, they're so quiet and they're, you know, they're, they're tall and they're skinny and they're like, very, like when you talk to them, they're like a child, you know, cause they're so young. But when it, com when it comes to like, let's say like the receptionist, the assistant designer, the people surrounding the designers, it gets to their head for some reason. It's not even the designer. I think it's the people around the designer that get this pride thing over here. And that when you see that, you don't even want to be close to that. I don't know. It could be contagious. But anyways, um, so I stopped interviewing. And I continued my job at the store. And I was just doing that for many years. And then, you know, when you have a dream, you know, my whole thing started. I, my mom said that I used to spend a lot of time watching my grandmother so. As you know, I'm from the Dominican Republic, so in the living room, she had her sewing machine. So when I was growing up over there, I, all my afternoons, I would just spend lo looking at her making stuff and probably asking questions. I don't know. I'm assuming. I didn't talk much back then. When I was younger, I didn't really talk at all. <laughs> my sister used to translate for me, but so... I was like, okay, I'm not going to go into interviews anymore. The years passed, and then they, they opened this website called Us Trendy, or I used to call it US Trendy. Um, and I was like, you know, I really want to, like, I'm, I want to make clothes. That's really my thing. You know, I had this dream for many, since I was so young. I was like, I've been, I used to sketch a lot. I mean, the website I opened when I was in college, so. And you can check that out. It's julissadesigns.com. So I was like, you know, I really, really want to make clothes. So I was like, okay. I bought a mannequin, save up enough, you know, bought a mannequin. And I had my sewing machine that people gave me. And then one, the little one I used to use in college too, that I used to bring to my dorm when I had homework to do. But anyway, so I did that. I made a dress, um, a couple of them. But one dress, I, I put it all out trendy. And these people used to put me on their black every time. And... Every day I would be like getting an email. Oh, you had a sale. You had a sale. I mean, you had you had you sold an item. 
you sold an item, this person wants this, this person wants that, can you do that? We put, we're going to do a story about you, we're going to put you on the blog, this and that. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. This is really happening. I'm so excited. So I was like, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start searching for like a little studio so I can have my stuff. And this is how this whole thing here came up. Um, I was like, I want like an office space. It wasn't really a store. But everybody thinks it's a store. Everybody, people have, for some reason, nobody knows anything about fashion until somebody starts doing it and everybody's an expert. That's all I'm saying. Everybody knows exactly what you should do, even though they've never done this before. So I opened the studio. Everybody called out a store. I said, no, it's not a store. They're like, you don't have any windows. No, I don't have any windows. Because, yes, you know, I used to be in the basement. This is my third year up here on the second floor for the windows, too. Um, so anyway, so I opened the studio. And I was like, you know what? From what I heard working in New York for designers and all of that, you don't really get the credit. You're coming home burned out so late at night, you know, to go back and leave early, to, you know, because you have to be in the office by nine. So imagine leaving from Connecticut to be there early, to get back again, to do that for five days a week and, you know, just to earn a paycheck and get experience. I was like, I'll just do my own thing. And now I see why God never opened that door for me in New York. I am so happy that that didn't happen because I was trying to glorify myself. Here, what I do here is connecting with people. You know, the models are local, the makeup artists are local people. Everybody, you know, just trying to push the business forward. Um, of course, I wish I had this place backed up right now that I didn't have the time to make a video or make the video with whoever came to buy and stuff and support. But, you know, we'll see what God wants. I've been praying a lot. Things take time, you know, even my online store for some reason been very low. Um, I don't know what's happening. You advertising all of that. The good thing this week though, the museum offered me to put a small um a session with my stuff on it. So I have maybe fifty percent of my stuff over there, not fifty, maybe less than that. But it's something so they're selling my stuff over there too. I have my place open today until four. You can always shop online, juliestadesigns.com. What I'm saying is that a lot of the times we want something to happen so bad and God has other plans. And sometimes you need to understand maybe I shouldn't do that anymore or take a break from it. And this is what I'm heading towards. It seems like, excuse me, it seems like I have to just take a break from this for some reason. Um, You know, finish the year and see what's going on and see where God wants to take it. Um, I tried to do that a couple months back and I was like, I can't do it. I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> um, but God knows everything. Anyways, um, when it comes to talents and doing career and all of that, just think about this is one one advice that you can take from this video besides hearing my story and all of that is that you have to be careful who you're telling your dreams to. A lot of people, they don't do anything with their lives um, because that's just not in them. It's, they don't want to be leaders. They don't want to have entrepreneur. They have no entrepreneur. Their entrepreneurship, I guess that's how you say it. They, they're fine just earning a paycheck Monday to Friday and hiding behind their cubicle. They're fine. That's okay. That's it. earning a living. That's, that's what you want to do. Go ahead. But if you're an entrepreneur like myself, um, and you want to glorify God with everything you do because that's what you do, right? God gives you talents and you glorify him with everything that you do. Um, so just pray for it, right? Make sure that everything you do is somehow directing people to Christ. As you know, I use glory to God on my logo. I use inspirational uh, messages on my, my jewelry. This is something that I made that I keep. Everybody looks at it and wants to talk to me about it. But... It's great. I don't. I have all the time you want to talk about John three sixteen. That's what it's all about, guys. It's about using your talents to glorify God. It's about spreading the gospel of Jesus. At the end of your life, God is not gonna be like, "Oh, you work for that designer. <gasps> That's amazing. You were in New York and you work for that, and you went to Italy and then you work for that." Do you think that's really gonna matter? 
that's all good here for the people on earth that they want to put you up here because you accomplished so much. But at the end of the day, who are you glorifying? You have to bring glory to God. He's the one who gives you the talent. He's the one who gives you the breath that you're breathing. Everything is all about God. This is God's creation. Okay? This is the best thing that happened to me was not get something in New York because my ego was up here. I was going to, I was just trying to get me glorify myself. And God is like, you know, it took a while for me to understand that, guys. I'm going to talk about that. I don't want to make this video longer than what it is now. But all I'm saying is that whatever you do has to somehow direct people towards Christ. You know, we're moving into 2020 pretty soon. Life is about Christ. You know, you're supposed to share the gospel of Jesus. If you're a Christian like myself, that's what happened to me. I would love to talk and connect with you more. Just subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on Instagram at Julissa Designs, julissadesigns.com. I have all the links, all the websites. I'll do my best to put all the links online. If you want to support my store, julissadesigns.com, you can shop online. Anyways, this was a video that I started talking about shops and all, and all of that, but I'm sure I'm not the only Christian designer out there who's going through stuff. So, anyways, I think somebody's coming. So, I'm going to go. Take care, guys. Bye.